Hey, what's up, Tech Carters? It's Paul. Just wanted to say hello to everybody tonight and talk about the new streaming video. I didn't want to do an informational or like really well done Arch Linux install video, but I do want to cover the three ways to install Arch Linux in 2024. So I'm just going to kind of do a, like a streaming type video. We're going to cover three different ways to install Arch Linux in 2024 using the ArchFi installation script, also using Arch Linux's Arch install installation script, and then number three, the fun way, by using the Arch installation ISO and just doing everything via the command prompt. Now, if you want to catch the actual informational video that I did, Arch Linux install with extra sauce, go grab that. That's what's on our blog. That's what's on our YouTube channel. And uh, that's still the way we are installing Arch Linux in 2023 and making it look spicy. But uh, tonight, we're going to cover three different ways to install Arch Linux with Hyperlind Tiling Window Manager. So let's go! The first way we're going to install Arch is with the ArchFi installation script. It makes it really easy. I'll press enter to get into my BIOS and then F12. You'll just select your USB stick. I'm using Ventoy, which allows me to boot many different ISOs, but there's the same Arch Linux 2023 ISO that I'm going to work off. Let's rock and roll. Boom! Boom! I love that. Doo -doo. I want to add it to my main system. All right, we'll just do the regular Arch Linux install medium. Okay, I'll make the font bigger for everyone. There we go. And I'm on a laptop, so I will need Wi-Fi. How do we connect to Wi-Fi? Run an IPA and you'll find your Wi-Fi card. Mine is number four listed there, WLAN zero. Yours will not be LO, it won't be ETH zero. So let me clear the screen. We're gonna use IWCTL to connect to Wi-Fi. So you type IWCTL dash dash passphrase and then your Wi-Fi's password, then the command station, and that's where we put that WLAN zero and then connect to your SSID name. I'm gonna go back and change my SSID name and my password and I'll just hide it on the screen. And with that information entered, just press enter. Then we'll clear the screen and we can do a ping 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 and you can see we are connected to the wonderful World Wide Web, or internet, or intrawebs, or network, or whatnot. All right, let's clear. Now we're gonna grab this ArchFi script. It's super easy to get. All we're going to do is type in curl dash L zero space ArchFi dot S, yeah, SF dot net slash ArchFi. It's curl L capital O, like the letter O. There we go. And now if we do an LS, you'll see that ArchFi is sitting right there. And all you run is SH space ArchFi. This will bring up the script and it'll be one of the easiest ways to install Arch Linux. I'm actually not going to change the language because I noticed that it'll change the size of this menu on screen and I want to keep it nice and big for you. Uh, but for me, load keys is going to be US. Uh, I'm going to set my editor to Vim. You guys can set Nano if you prefer. Nano is a little bit easier to use. Vim is hard if you're not up on Linux. Then we'll do disk partitions. And I'm just going to keep it easy today. I'm not even going to do Lux. If you want to use Lux encryption, go check out last year's Arch installation video. It'll be at the end of this video or you can find it on the TechHeart channel. We're going to do GPT EFI. Uh, you want to pick the right disk here. So my 931 is the hard drive in the system, 57.8 gigabytes is my USB drive. So let's select SDA. It's usually the biggest drive you have there or the size that matches the hard disk that's in your system. You'll have to say yes. And there we go. This script, when it's done, as long as you do the menu option and it drops you back into the menu, you don't have to do this again. We've already partitioned the disk. We're done. We can go back. 
Now we select partitions. And since we selected auto, these will all be on the right selection. So my boot device is SDA1. I just press enter. Swap is SDA2 and root is SDA3. And we have none for our home device. We could set those up, but we're going for easy today. Let's format these devices. Um, for SDA1, which is our boot, we're gonna do a FAT32 for our EFI. That's correct. The script tries to get all the settings for you. SDA2 is swap. So we'll use swap and we're just gonna use ext4. I do have some videos about ButterFS and uh, it's a pretty cool file system. But again, this is easy Arch Linux and Hyperlint. So let's select it. All right, now we can mount these drives. One, two, three. We won't do edit the mirror list, but I will do filter the mirror list. That gets the fastest mirrors for us. So just select enter on that reflector.service. When that's done, just press enter. And we will do the parallel downloads option for five. That allows more than one package to be downloaded by Pac-Man at, at a time. And then let's go to uh, Packstrap, install Arch Linux Packstrap. We'll just use the Linux kernel and Linux firmware. We're gonna grab DOSFS tools. And that's it for right now. We're not running LVM or ButterFS. So just select okay, and let it do its thing. See those five uh, package downloads at one time now? You don't select that, you only pull one at a time. All right, baby, jam on it. Press enter, and now we can config Arch Linux. Uh, we'll set a host name. I'll just call it Arch Linux. You can change it to whatever you like. Uh, keyboard layout, we wanna select US again here. The locale, this will be different for everybody, but for me, it's gonna be EN US. All right, the local time, I'll do America, Los Angeles, and I'm gonna go local. I know, I should switch over to UTC. We will set a root password, enter whatever you prefer. And then let's generate fstab with UUID. There we go. We don't need to edit the fstab or the MK init CPIO right now. We don't need to do anything except go to bootloader. Boom! I'm gonna use Grub, system D is also popular. If you're a real geek, yeah, well, let's not go there. Grub, install Grub. There we go. And uh, we're EFI, so say yes for EFI boot manager. By the way, we're not gonna install OS Prober today, but if you do wanna do a dual boot with Windows and Arch Linux, you can find one of our videos from a couple months ago, dual booting Windows and Arch Linux. Nice and easy, we'll get you booting both. Now install Grub on SDA. We're doing EFI here. Okay, no errors reported. Let's go. We can go back now because we're done installing Grub. And let's go to Extras, Nano, Vim, DHCP, CD, and Network Manager, and press Enter on all four of those. All right. Now you have a vanilla Arch Linux installation on this computer. You could reboot right now, and you'd be dropped to the command prompt, and you could build a system by hand. But we are going to use Arch Die, which is uh, sister script to ArchFi, and it'll let us do desktops and other softwares. So select OK on ArchDie, say OK again, and you can say install and run, I guess, doesn't really matter. Select the first SourceForge. If it doesn't come down, you have another option there, but let's go into updates and see if there's anything we need. We will run an upgrade, so do that. OK, then we can come down, and it doesn't have Peru. Yay is good. I'll install Yay right now, even though I prefer Peru. We could build Peru by hand after the script, but this is about ease, so we'll install Yay. It's just as good. Yay is a Pac-Man helper. Pac-Man is the main package manager for Arch Linux, but Arch Linux also has what's called the AUR. It's the Arch user repository, and it has other softwares that aren't in the main repos, like SyncTerm to connect to BBSs, you would have to build that from source on Ubuntu. But with Arch, you can just use Yay or another AUR helper to install that AUR package. You can go to aur.archlinux.org to find all the AUR softwares that are available. There's a lot. That's why you're using Arch. All right, so we're done there. We'll run an upgrade with Yay. Okay, we can go back. Now go to install. We'll look in console. Sudo nano vim v by wget. You can pick what you want in here. 
I'm just going to leave. I'll, I'll select Neo Fetch and Base Devel also. Base Devel is the development software if you plan on building anything from uh, source. Select OK on your selections there. The defaults are OK. Add anything that you want. I already went there, right? Yeah. OK, compression tools. I'll select all those. So this ArchFi helps you remember packages that we should be installing. So here, rsync, trace route, and bind tools are selected. I'm also going to select speed test CLI, and that's it. You select what you like. Go to web browser. I will install links. That's just a command line web browser. It's not graphical, but I like LYNX. And recovery tools, I don't need anything there. So we'll go back out. And now we can go on to Xorg. Oops, I'm sorry. Now we can go to system. Okay, we don't want to add any more kernels. Services. I like all that. I, I have Intel U-Code selected. If you're on an AMD machine, select AMD U-Code. But I'm on an Intel. So I'm going to go with the defaults there too. All right. Uh, we will start Network Manager Service at boot and disable DHCPD, that's fine. I'll start SSH server. If you don't want to open that up, select no. And I'll do all the defaults on the rest of this, even though I don't love them. Bluetooth at boot, yes. And there we go. That was the services. File system. Again, we don't need OS Prober, but if you were going to want to dual boot with Windows, you probably already have Windows installed and you need that to get it. We don't need snap or anything. I will get SSHFS, as I do use that sometimes. I'll also get SIFS utils, which is uh, or drive shares from Windows. And I need NFS utils, because I use NFS shares from Linux. Those are, uh, you know, like your NAS. All right, let's OK on that. That is now finished, so we can press Enter. And we'll go to Sound. I'm going to take Wire Plumber. Uh, Pulse Audio is the older, solid one. I'm going to pick Wire Plumber and go with those defaults. Got to have audio, baby. I want to listen to my CDs. All right. Back out of there. And print. I do not want print, so I'm just going to go back. If you want print, you can just go with those defaults mainly, and uh, you'll have printer services and access. Okay. That was System. We get on to Zorg. You can get info on your GPUs if you don't know what you have. I know that I have Intel. So I will install Xorg Server and Xorg init, and I don't need any of these. So just the defaults here too. Uh, for fonts, I'll just grab the defaults. And for input drivers, yeah, I just want XF86 input lib input. And video drivers, I want open source. And we want the Intel one for us. If you're on AMD, you select this up here. Or you can get those closed source drivers in the other tab. Uh, proprietary, right here. You can get your NVIDIA stuff. Now for DE, we're going to install Hyperlin. So we'll just hold off here. We'll select SDDM. Oh, wait, or GE. Yeah, I forget which one. With, uh, we'll hold off on that too. And I'm going to hold off on applications also, but you can go through here and pick Firefox and whatnot. All right, so the last thing here is config. Um, I don't need anything in Bash. Well, I will select update Bash RC. I think the uh, script just gives you a base. I won't set up any firewall rules right now, but I will add a user. So let's add our user. We are TechHeart and enter a password for your user. With that done, I want to give that user sudoer access. So we'll add a sudoer and select your user. We won't make any systemd changes, nor will we create that. And we don't need to make any boot changes either. So with all that being done, we can exit. And once we're dropped out, we can keep going back. We can select Reboot. 
and boot Arch for the first time. But we still gotta install Hyperland because we're hackers and we want Hyperland on this puppy. Okay, so log in with your sudoer account. And I'll flash up on screen uh, this theme that we're gonna use. We're just gonna install the Hyper V4 theme. If you want to install Hyperlin base, just follow the uh, Arch Linux and I think you install Hyperlin or Hyperlin-git and uh, SDDM. But I'm gonna do a command here to install Hyper V4. Clear the screen. And I'm gonna run yay-s and let me get all the packages uh, entered in. Hyperland with no E. Kitty. JQ. Mako. Waybar dash Hyperland. S. W. 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 Swaylock dash effects. Wolfie. W. Logout, baby. XDG dash desktop dash portal dash Hyperland. Swappy. Grim and Slurp. Thudar. Whole kit dash Gnome. Python. Requests. Paximer. Have you control? Brightness CTL. Blues. I think we already installed blues. Blues utils. I think we got that already too. Blue man. Network manager applet. GVFS. Tunar. Archive. Login. File roller. With a dash. Btop. Everybody loves some Btop, baby. Pac-Man contrib. Starship, TTF JetBrains, oops, TTF dash JetBrains, mono, I think, mono nerd, mono dash nerd, Nato fonts emoji, Nato dash fonts dash emoji, baby. Oops, with one J, Papa Bear. LX, appearance, XFCE4 dash settings, SDDM, get, uh, SDDM sugar, SDDM dash sugar, dash candy, dash it. Now let's see if any of these fail and we have to select different packages. Oops, we don't have internet. So, so we can run NMTUI. We can activate a connection and just select your Wi-Fi. Enter your password. And connect. Okay, we'll test that with a ping 888. And there we go. Now we'll just push the up key until we get back to that yay command and try it again. So we want rust here. That's fine. Press enter again. And let that puppy go. Okay, we seem to be done with no issues. I'll clear the screen and let's try to run Hyperland with a capital H and no E. And boom! I'm not gonna edit the um, output. I have the main screen on my laptop and the capture device is just showing you that overflow screen. Uh, but this is Hyperland Hyper V4 with all of its theming. And we're in there, baby! Just like that, quick install with ArchFi. So we'll select the USB again. This time, we're going to install with Arch install. It's the installation script that Arch Linux delivers with their product. So let's boot into Arch, the Arch ISO. This time, when it comes time to install Hyperlind, we will use Hyper V4's script. Let me set the font so it's bigger for y'all. There we go. If you're on ethernet, you'll have network already, but I'm on Wi-Fi, so we can type IPA to see our Wi-Fi card, which for me, or device, which for me is WLAN zero. That being said, we use IWCTL dash dash pass phrase, and then your password for your Wi-Fi, then station and the device name, which is WLAN zero for me, connect 
and your SSID name. Again, I'm going to go change those for my settings. I'll hide it from you. But you just type in your SSID on the end and your password right here. Let that connect. And then you can test it with ping 8.8.8.8. .8 and you can see we're on the interwebs, baby. So Arch Linux has its own installation script called Arch install. And we can also use that if you don't want to install Arch from the command line using the Arch wiki. It's also quick. I think Arch Phi is a little more, I don't want to say developed anymore because it's an old tool and Arch install has been being worked on. I still like Arch Phi if I'm going to use a script, but Arch install is also great. I haven't used it a lot, but let's step through it. We don't have to change the language. The mirrors. I'll look at the mirror region, but I'm not going to change much. I'll just go down and select US. We press enter to select and go back. Locale says defined. Yep, I like that. US, ENUS, and UTF-8. Let's do disk configuration. We can use a best effort. This is about simple here today. Three easy ways to install Arch. So we use the best effort and select your main drive. You can see my main drive is the one terabyte SSD. Now that's got the last Arch we just installed on it, but this should take care of that for us. We're gonna use ext4, and I don't wanna create a separate partition for home. You can do that if you prefer, and there we go. We will set up disk encryption uh, just to show that as an option. I was going with ease, but let's enter a password here. And again, We're going to use Lux and which partitions are primary. Select that and that's it. We can select back. It wants to use systemd boot. I'm going to select grub. It's what I like. A lot of people like systemd boot though. We'll leave swap to true. Host name's fine. Let's go to root password. Enter one that you like. Uh, let's set up a user account. We will use the tech heart user and give them a password. That's not a weak password. And yes, we want it to be a sudo user. So there we go. Confirm and exit. Um, profile. Yeah, it's going to ask me desktop minimal or server or, Z or Xorg. Oh, you know what? I installed Xorg on that last install and we went with Hyperlint. Okay. We can actually do a Hyperlint desktop. So let's select that. That'll make it a little bit easier. Just press enter on that. We'll use poll kit and SDDM. There we go. We can click, click back. Let's go to audio. We will use pipe wire, kernels Linux, that's fine. Um, additional packages, I want Vim and NeoFetch. You could type nano here. Okay, in network config, we'll use network manager. Time zone, you can go select yours. Mine's America, Los Angeles. Oh yeah, Los Angeles, where the rock stars roam. There we go, that should be it. We'll save the configuration, or I'm sorry, we don't want to save the configuration, we'll just install. So let's press that and see what happens. That exports into this text file that gives all the information over to the Arch installer and installs the system for us. Uh oh, five, four, three, two, one, goodbye hard drive, boom. You enjoy this montage and I'll be back with y'all when the system's in. Just like that, uh, would we like to troot in? You know, I don't think so. But we are just gonna live on the seat of our pants and reboot now. Okay, since we used Lux, enter that encryption password. That'll open up that device. And then we will use our sudo user credentials to get in. Hyperland. Now we don't even have Kitty, so I'll exit Hyperland, and I can just use Control Alt F3 to get over here. We can use our login. Control Alt F3 just brings you to a text TTY, 
And let's do a couple things that the arch install script does not do. I'm gonna just make a downloads directory and CD into downloads. Um, I don't think we have git, so I'll type uh, sudo pacman-s git, use your password. Oops, right, we don't have internet. So again, we can run nmtui now, activate a connection, select your Wi-Fi. If you're on ethernet, you won't have to do this, but there you go. And now I can do sudo pacman-s git. Okay, now we can run git clone https colon slash slash aur dot arch linux dot org slash peru dot git. Uh, peru is like yay, it's another helper. It takes a little bit more to build, but it's worth it. So we'll run make pkg dash si. Let that go. All right, Peru is done. We can exit out of there and RMRF the Peru directory. But now you can see we have Peru. And now let's do a git clone on the github.com for SOL does tech HYPR capital V4 dot git. That's Sol does techs hyper V4. Well, right there you can see the set hyper script. I think you have to run it with sudo access, but it'll tell us. Okay, it will ask when it needs sudo, so I'll say yes. I don't wanna disable Wi-Fi power save. If you're on a laptop, you might want to. Oh, and look at that, it's configuring yay when I just installed Peru. Derpy Derperton. We want to install the packages, so yes. This will give us, you know, Kitty and all those packages that a stock Hyperlint install doesn't set up for you. Get you a lot further, faster, unless you know what you're doing with Hyperlint. You'll have to select yes to a couple more questions that pop up on screen. Okay, so we got through that. Now we can run Hyperlint. And bango, just like that, there's our setup. Theming's already done. You can step through all the different themes. Here's V1, V2, V3, V4. All right, so there's your installation using Arch install. So now here's the big one. We ain't gonna use no scripts. We're gonna install right from the Arch installation media. So let's boot up into Arch Linux. So I'll change that font just to be bigger for us again. Boom. Since I'm on Wi-Fi, we know that mine's WLAN zero. We use IWCTL dash dash passphrase and a password for our SSID. We'll do station, which for me is WLAN zero. Connect and your SSID name. So I'll go fill those in for me. I'll blur them out for you. We'll test that with a ping 8.8.8.8 .8 and we are on the internet. So here we go. The first thing we'll do is load keys. Now I know that mine is load keys US, but if you wanted to find what key maps, you could run local CTL list key maps space grep. And for me, it would be US. There's all the US ones. But if you're from France, you do FR, et cetera, et cetera. And then you just do your load keys and your country code. For me, it's US. Now we're going to do a Pac-Man, oops, dash SY reflector. We just want to get the fastest mirrors so the installation goes smooth. After we have that, we'll run reflector dash C in your country code. Mine's US. We'll do A12 dash dash sort by rate and we'll save that to slash etc. Oops, that messed up. Pacman.d slash mirror list. I am going to push control C and push up just so you can see that command. Reflector dash C US dash A12 dash dash sort by rate dash dash save etc. Pacman D mirror list. I'll take a minute to run, but let it pull down the fastest mirrors so we can have a good install experience. Okay, with that done, we'll just run a pacman uh, syy to get the system updated. Now let's tackle this disk. Mine is dev sda. I can tell because that's the 931 gigabytes. It's the biggest one, and I know that there's a one terabyte hard drive in this disk. So before we format it for the new install, let's run cf disk on dev sda 
And there's that last installation we just did with Arch install script. Let's simply delete both of those. So there's only a free space line. And now we can create a new partition that's 200 megabytes, so 200M. We're gonna change that type to EFI system. That's our EFI boot partition. Now we'll make another one with the remainder of the drive. And that'll be our Linux file system. Let's write that. We have to type yes and then quit. Now, if we run LS block, we can see the dev SDA1 and dev SDA2. This time we're gonna use a swap file, so those two partitions will suffice. Let's set up our looks encrypted device. We'll type crypt setup dash y dash v for verbose and then luks format on dev SDA2. Type yes in capital letters and set a password. And now we have to open it. So we'll use crypt setup again, open slash dev SDA2, and we'll name it LUKS root. Type in our password. That will open that crypt device. Now if we run LS block, you'll see SDA1 and SDA2 with a little arrow or bracket underneath to lux root. And that's gonna actually be at dev slash mapper slash lux root. Okay, let's format these drives. mkfs.ext4 on dev mapper lux root, because that's where that encrypted partition is now. Then we'll run mkfs.fat dash capital F32 on dev SDA1. Okay, now if we run that ls block, we can now mount the drives. Let's mount dev mapper lux root to slash mount. Then we can make directory mount slash boot, and we can mount dev sda1 to mount boot. Now if we run that ls block, you can see that sda1 is at slash mount boot, and luxroot is at mount. So that's good. We can run a pack strap. Pack strap is like Pac-Man, but it installs to that mount point. It's like bootstrapping the system. So we run pack strap on slash mnt, and we're just gonna install base, Linux for the kernel, Linux dash firmware. I'm gonna install Vim, you could put Nano. And you can either install AMD dash Ucode if you're on an AMD machine, or I'm on an Intel machine, I'll install Intel dash Ucode. We can run that pack strap, let it install. All right, now we can generate an fstab, commands gen fstab, and we wanna use UUIDs, so dash capital U, and we're gonna create that in slash MNT, two brackets, and we'll type slash mount, slash et cetera, and then fstab. Now we can take a look at that, cat mount, et cetera, fstab, and we can see down there, our root partition of lux root is at root, and our boot, SDA1, is at slash boot. We're ready to troot into the system. So we can run arch dash troot on slash MNT. You'll see the prompt change. And now if you do an LS, the system is actually that slash MNT directory, but we're right into it now. So anything we do is just like we were on our arch system. Let's take care of that swap file. We're gonna run fallocate uh, dash L eight GB. And we're gonna put it right in root swap underscore file. That's actually a file. And we're gonna change permissions on that. So chmod 600 on slash swap file. Then let's run make swap mk swap on slash swap file and let's turn it on with swap on slash swap file now we have to edit the fstab so type nano slash etc slash fstab we can go down here i'm using vim so it might look a little different i'll just type swap file here with a hash sign so it's commented out make sure there's a hash symbol if you want to add that title and we're going to type slash swap file which is actually the file we'll do tab tab no mount point so it's none swap so type swap Another two tabs, we'll do defaults, oops, defaults. We can do zero, zero. So slash swap file, none, swap, defaults, zero, zero, and put two tab in between each one of those. Let's do some locale and time settings. We're gonna do an ln dash sf on slash user, share, zone info, slash, and now your country, mine's America, and then where you're from, mine's Los Angeles. Put a space and we'll do slash etc slash local time, oops. Local time. Now, if you look at that, uh, do a ls all on etc. local time. You can see there's a sim link that points to your locale. Let me clear the screen. Run hw clock dash dash sys 
two HC. Now let's edit that locale file. So nano slash etc slash locale dot gen. And you're gonna go down and find your uh, line. Mine's en underscore us utf8 and remove the hash on your country utf8 for us and save the file. Then run locale dash gen. Okay, let's echo capital LANG equals EN underscore capital US dot UTF eight, and then we'll do bracket bracket to etc. Locale dot conf. Then we'll echo capital key map equals US bracket bracket slash etc. slash V console dot conf. Then I'm going to echo, well, I'll edit it so you can run nano on slash etc host name and I'm just going to enter arch linux and that's the host name for this computer you can name it whatever you like now let's nano slash etc slash hosts we have to make some modifications here go to the end and we'll add more lines the first one is 127.0.0.1 tab tab local host the second line is colon colon one tab tab local host I could have put one tab on the first line the last line is 127.0.0.1 tab your host name. So mine was Arch Linux dot local domain, another tab and your host name again. Mine was Arch Linux and then save that file. We can set the root password just by typing pass WD and adding your password of choice for the root account. Now we're ready to install some software. So we'll do a Pacman dash S. I want base devel blues. Blues Utils for Bluetooth, Cups, oops, Cups for Printing, Dialog, DOS FS Tools, EFI Boot MGR. Let's throw in Git and Grub. Let's do Linux dash Headers. Let's do M Tools. We'll do Network, oops, dash Manager, Applet, dash Applet, and Network Manager. We'll do Pulse Audio dash Bluetooth reflector wireless underscore tools WPA underscore supplicant XDG dash user dash ders and XDG dash utils. The XDG stuff, when you create a user account, it adds those folders, downloads and documents and videos and whatnot. We'll let that finish up. Baby! Okay. Now we're ready to add grub to the system. So let's do grub dash install. We're gonna do dash dash target equals x86 underscore 64 dash EFI. Then dash dash EFI dash directory equals slash boot. Also dash dash boot loader equals bootloader dash ID equals capital grub. Press enter and if all is good, it should say installation finished, no error reported. Now let's run grub dash MK config dash O slash boot slash grub slash grub dot CFG. There we go. Now we have to add our Lux partition to grub so it knows where to boot from. So let's type another command, block ID, BLK ID. And in this block of text, we're looking for the crypto underscore looks UUID. If you remember, that's gonna be our LUKS root partition that's mounted to slash dev slash mapper slash lux root. So make note of that UUID. It's not the part UUID, it's the UUID. You can tell it's the right one because the type equals crypto underscore looks and mine starts with 39B9 and ends with C1C6. I'm just gonna take a picture of that. So knowing that, we can do nano slash etc slash default slash grub. And here, we're gonna find the grub command line Linux line. It's right here. And we're gonna insert some text. So in between these two quotes on the grub underscore CMD line underscore Linux line, let's type in crypt device equals UUID, because that's what we're using, the UUID, equals, and now we're gonna enter that UUID and make sure that you get it perfect. Again, mine starts with 39B9, and let me enter it. And then check to make sure you got it inserted right. After that UUID, put another colon, and then for us, it's lux root. Then we're gonna put a space, and we're gonna type root equals slash dev slash mapper slash, and for us, again, it's lux root. Let's save that bad boy. And now we can run another grub, oops, 
mkconfig-o slash boot slash grub slash grub.cfg. And now grub will know to boot to that partition. Let's enable a couple things. Systemctl enable network with a capital manager with a capital M. We'll do systemctl enable Bluetooth. Uh, let's get us a sudo user. We can do user add dash M capital G wheel. We want to be in the wheel group and the username, techheart for us. Now we're going to type editor equals nano, or for me, I'm going to use vim, but you can just type nano in there and then you'll run vice sudo. This is a very important command. You got to be very careful in here not to edit it the wrong way. You're going to go down two pages, three pages, and you're going to find the first wheel line. So we're going to unhash the percent wheel, all equals all, all, just like that. What that does, that gives sudo access to any user in the wheel group, and we've added our user to that wheel group. We're ready to reboot for the first time, but I got more sauce to share with you, baby. We're gonna make this a hot arch install. So let's reboot now. There's our arch install. As long as we entered those UUIDs correctly, we should boot right in. Enter your Lux encryption password. We're gonna give this some sauce, baby. Okay, and you can log in with your user account. And here we go. Oh, goodness gracious. I forgot to set a password for that user account. So I'll log in with my root password. That was a rookie mistake. And let's type passwd our user account. For me, it was techheart. And we'll enter a password for that user. Man, that ruins the whole video. Now we can exit and log in as that sudo user. Techheart and your password. Uh, now I'm on Wi-Fi as stated, so I'll have to connect to the internet. But we have it easy now. We can just run NMTUI, activate a connection, pick your Wi-Fi, enter the password, and profit, baby, profit. Okay, sudo pacman dash S, capital S. And I'm going to run XF86 dash video dash Intel. That's for Intel cards. If you have an AMD, you'd type AMD GPU here. But I'm on Intel. So let's install that. And now, do you remember how when we rebooted and unlocked our looks encryption, it was just a line of text. It looked really blah. Let's do something about that. Let's run git clone dash dash depth one on HTTPS slash github.com slash vandal byte slash deadsec dash grub dash theme dot git. And let's pull that down. It's actually GitLab. So let's change that to GitLab. And let's pull that down. <laughs> uh, we'll CD into DeadSec Grub theme. And we're gonna run sudo python3 on DeadSec theme pi dash dash install. Now you should go to that web page and pick your favorite one. I don't even know what they are. I'm just gonna pick one. They're all pretty cool. I'll pick site down. I don't think I love that one, but you can select 1440p and color icons. And we can clear the screen. Uh, you can delete that folder if you like. It is 317 megabytes, but I'll keep it because I just picked a random one and I might want to change it later. Let's get some cool Plymouth themes that will give us a better uh, boot graphics than stock. We'll run peru-s on Plymouth-theme-optimus-git and I'll pull that sucker down too. Booyah! Okay, now that that's done, we're gonna run peru-s on Plymouth-git. That'll replace the regular Plymouth that might be installed with the bleeding edge version. All right, now that Plymouth git is installed, we'll do a sudo nano on slash et cetera, mkinitcpio.conf. And we're going to add to that hooks line the Plymouth hook just before encrypt. Add Plymouth. That will allow Plymouth to graphically unlock your looks encrypted partition. So save that file. And then let's make things quiet on the grub side. We'll do sudo nano, etc. default grub. We're going to make sure that we add quiet, which is already there, and splash so that the graphics show up. Save that file. And now we can do two commands, sudo grub mkconfig dash o slash boot grub grub.cfg. And we're gonna do a sudo Plymouth set default theme. I'll have to go back and put sudo in. Dash capital R Optimus. 
that sets that Plymouth theme to the Optimus one, which has a really cool graphical uh, looks unlock. So now we're done. Let's do a sudo reboot now and see that neat stuff that we added and we'll be done. Look at that, man. You just installed Linux from the command line. What a gangster. All right, let's check out these graphics. Boom, look at that grub screen, man. Gangster theme and you could have picked from about a dozen. Let's boot in. Bam, unlocking that looks encryption like a boss. Type your password in here. Wow, Optimus Prism. Okay, we can log in here with our sudo user. And now let's go work on that Hyper-V4. I'll move into my downloads directory. I'll clear the screen and type git clone, https github.com slash sol does tech slash Hyper-V4 with a capital V dot git. We'll pull that into Hyper-V4. We'll move into that directory and we can run set Hyper. And again, I'm gonna run through this real fast but install all of this uh, Hyper-V4 stuff if you choose to. I'll catch you at the flip. Booyah! And boom, just like that, we've got our entire setup. We can type our password here and we'll blast right into the Hyper-V4 theming. We can come over here. We can click this little dot. Boom. Uh, we're on V4 right now. We can click that to go to V1, V2, V3, and down here for V4, baby girl. Let's do a reboot just to see that cool stuff that we've installed one more time. We got that sick grub theme. We got that gangster Plymouth Lux unlock theme. We've got our SDDM login. And we've got our Hyper V4. Gangster baby, you just installed Arch like a rock star. Peace out.